Pete, I, I feel like this is a question that we can ask now for the second year in a row. But when you when you're down several offensive linemen, is that inhibit what you can do as much as anything? That they, well, I th- I think this. I think we still get together and, and obviously we talk about it as we're going through the, the game plan. And um, you know, obviously um, Doug and Zach do a great job of uh, getting those guys ready. Whoever's going to have to be out there. And I think that uh, you know we still got to run our offense and uh, you know I think any game that you go into you you pay attention to not only who you have but maybe who you're winding up against with and uh, you know where certain things might go as far as game planning. I think Dennis mentioned that you still thought you guys were going to have some success running the ball last week was that was that sort of one of the bigger detriments to last week's game I guess? Yeah I think this I I think that uh, really you would say the last two weeks we haven't uh, been effective really on first or second down, um, whether that's running the ball or or, uh, or even just some throwing catches last week as you're watching the film. Um, and then I think nine or 12 last week, third downs were seven plus. And that's a situation that we're, we found ourselves in the last two weeks. It's, it's not it's not good. And obviously the results, we end up with less than 50 plays, two games in a row. Um, and so you never really get into a rhythm. Uh, but I think that again, you know, Zach, Doug, those guys, and Dan Roshar, they're all working together and trying to put the best game plan together because you know, you got you got to be able to run the football to be successful in this league. I guess piggybacking off Michael a little bit, how difficult is it to do exactly what you want to do when you're trying to, trying to mix and match offensive line in this late season? Yeah, I think, again, the guys that are going to be out there, we're going to have confidence in. Obviously, again, we'll pay attention to, um, you know, who we have, but also, you know, the matchups uh, that we're going to, be facing. Obviously, we've got a big challenge ahead of us, the Oki structure with the Rams, and uh, that's what we've seen the last couple of weeks. But, you know, they're very multiple in, uh, in their alignments, and so targeting them, they make it difficult for you to know where everybody's lining up. Um, again, we gotta, uh, you know, we got to find ways, we got to be creative in what we do. When you guys are dialing up the offensive line, how much does that impact, like, the plays on your play sheet? Like, are you, like, doing quicker passes? Uh, yeah, I think all those factors go into the, uh, the discussion, regardless of you know what week and who's potentially playing, and maybe what you're doing as far as um, you know your protection. I think uh, yeah, I think you guys are asking all the right questions. That's part of it. Same way, does Aaron Donald affect what you can do in an offense as much as any one individual he's player one, you've ever faced? He's one of the most disruptive just players, and just you know. Regardless, you just see him making plays and plays, and like I said, they're they're multiple with their alignments, and so obviously they make it hard for teams to target where uh, where he's going to be, and that's obviously their scheme, and obviously they do a great job, but he's obviously a great great player. Coach, because you see so many successful, I guess, two running back systems in the league. How much of an impact can David Johnson make for this run? Yeah, I think this. I think you know he was here for us for a few days back in the off season, and. Uh, He's been productive in the league when he's played. Um, a guy that we felt comfortable with. I think, you know, the, the last two games you look at it, we just haven't had enough run. You know, we haven't had enough plays in general to get anybody carries, let alone you know two guys. But obviously, he's somebody that we're very uh, feel very good about. Positive again, the production that he's had when he's played in this in the NFL, and so uh, you know we're excited to have him. How was uh, Trevor Penning just developed behind the scenes during during the time that he was up? Yeah, I know that. Um, you know, those discussions uh, are more with the trainers and what's, you know, how his progress is going. But I obviously, uh, you know, he's a guy that we're going to be excited when we get him back out here. He's obviously, we were excited about him. And then, uh, you know, it was unfortunate the last preseason game. But again, a guy that uh, we're excited about is when he can get back. Even when you're having those, uh, those staff conversations about who's going to start for you, a quarterback, what exactly are y'all looking for out of that position? What, what kind of goes into those discussions? Easier to land on well, I think you have that those discussions as a staff again with Dennis, and uh, you know just kind of go through the you know what gives us the best chance to win. But also, you know, as you look at it, you can't pinpoint the blame. Or, you know, I got to do better first. You know, it's, it starts with with me and, and uh, what we're doing offensively. And so, I think we have those discussions. We kind of come through the week and say, you know what, this is what we think for this week. This is what's best. This gives us the best chance to win. So, um, you know, it's an easy position to sometimes talk about, obviously, because it's the, the leader of your team. But, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, we feel like we have to do better. 
Pete, did you guys, uh, going back to you have to run to be able to success, have success in offense, did you guys make a conscious decision either heading into this season or sometime around sort of London in week five when you got the run game going that, that yeah. you wanted that to be? Well, I think I think it was always – I think it was always kind of the um, – you know, as we were going through the preseason, what we thought was, uh, you know, the, was going to be best with our personnel and, and uh, for this team, a little bit of, you know, mixing the run with some play action, um, but not all games end up going that way. And so, uh, you know, again, we got to be better than we were the last two games for sure. And then uh, I think when you're able to do that, then all your other stuff works as well. There's, you know, there were years where you guys were leading the NFL in, in passing yardage run here. Does it does it require like a stubbornness to to make the run like to to not give up on the run game as soon as you? Get I, the wall a couple I times? think it, I think it becomes more of a challenge when you you know you're at halftime and you're talking and it's like we've only run twenty plays. Um, I think sometimes it's a challenge, but I think you also have to look at where was the game. It was ten ten at halftime, and so. Uh, you know, it's it's you can't abandon it. You can't you can't abandon it right away. And just uh, you know, we talk at halftime and the discussion of hey, what do we feel is best going into the second half gives us the best chance. Um, but again, you know, I I think it becomes hard when you're dropping back and throwing every play. So it still has to be a big part of what we're doing. Kind of kind of related to that, like yeah. the, the free snap penalties, putting you behind the sticks pretty consistently. And is that yeah, I mean that's uh, that's really inexcusable. That's you know something that's uh, you know, we've had some at home the, the last few home yeah. games as well, and it's something that obviously uh, we continue to preach. Dennis's message to the team about those is really, you know, when you when you have the self-inflicted wounds, that makes it even more of a challenge. So those things aren't, aren't they're not acceptable, and we got to get them corrected. You've known Dennis for a while. What's it been like watching him navigate his new role as head coach? Well, I think this. I think he does a great job in the team room, um, talking to the team, keeping them together. Uh, his message every day, and it's a, it's you know it's about us, and um, you know I, so I yeah I've known him and but I know he's been in that role before, um, but I think he has a good feel for what the team needs, whether it's you know just what's he saying or how we're going out to practice, are we walking through, are we going padded practices? I think he's done a great job with that.